I'm Bill Marvin. I'm 84 years old. I have, a, I think, a nine stent uh, uh, heart now. So my heart is probably more artificial than real. My name is Christy Walker. I'm the TAVR clinical coordinator for TMC and all the patient referrals for a TAVR are referred to me and I take all that information and work the patient up and then we see them here in our TAVR clinic and determine if they're a candidate for the procedure. What's a TAVR? And they said uh, it's, a, it's a method of putting a, a new aortic valve in your heart without cutting your sternum open. I said, I'm all ready for that. I'll take that. In this room, we actually see the patient. We go through all of their studies, all their information, and explain the procedure to them. I show them the valve. I can show them a video. If needed, I give a brochure and just basically explain the procedure itself. And, and then ultimately, the patient decides if they want it or not. I gather all of their diagnostic tests um, their studies, look through those, and then I uh, put all the information together, schedule them a clinic visit with us here, and then we look over all of that and, and take our next steps. We get a chest CT because we have to take measurements of the valve and the peripheral vessels. Hi, my name is Pam Culpepper. Um, I am the lead structural heart tech uh, in charge of structural heart and TAVR, working with uh, Dr. Thomas here at TMC. I really thought that this was a natural fit because the cardiac program here was very strong. They had a very strong community of physicians already practicing here, and it made sense that TAVR would come to this facility with the cardiologists already in place and just grow from there. Well, I had atrial fibrillation in February. My quality of life from February till procedure time in October Eh, pretty edgy. They are, they're pretty miserable because they can't do the things that they normally do every day. They, they can't walk long distances. They can't play with their grandchildren and they're, because they're just too short of breath. So they just want help. They want to be fixed. They want to be able to do those things without being short of breath. October 15th, 2013. Dr. Thomas did his magic on my aortic valve. During that uh, a TAVR, my role is basically uh, instruction, organization, uh, proctoring the staff so that they are familiar with the procedure, I'm in charge of training all the personnel involved in the procedure. It's a, a very high acuity, very complex procedure that brings a vast amount of value to these patients. I just went to sleep and the next thing I know I'm uh, alive and waking, awake in the uh, ICU there at TMC, joking with the nurses. It's amazing. I, patients feel immediate relief. Like, I mean, as soon as they hit the ICU, they can actually tell that they're feeling better. Um, and even their color looks better. They have more color to their face as they did before they went in and after. So yeah, they want to go home pretty much the next day. So, but we have to kind of keep them around, you know, a few days, make sure they're okay, make sure their medications are right and stuff like that. But yeah, they do feel pretty good right after. Since the surgery, I have felt myself growing better okay, almost daily. Okay, uh, if I get back on my exercise routine and uh, heal up the, the, the muscles that need to be healed up, that would be a good shape. So afterwards, I usually call them the day they get home to make sure they're home and doing well. They have my number, so they call me a lot and have with questions. Um, we do bring them back into this clinic one month post-op to make sure that they're doing okay. So we do see them one month post-op here. We want to see them one year later, but in between the one month and the one year, they go back to their referring cardiologist. Bill Marvin was one of the patients that I enjoyed working on. He was a, he's a very vivacious, charismatic uh, man who works continues to work four days a week in his community. Jim, we run out of paper. Exercise is those parts of the body that need exercising. You get up from a chair and you stand up at least 40 times an hour, maybe 50, maybe more. You have to write down their license plate. So when you get a glance at that, you have to remember, so you're really tasked. Memory is a very important thing and it grows. Your memory gets better. Me, by being in this role, adds a continuity of care for the whole, the whole picture because I talk to them before the procedure, I'm there during the procedure, I see them in the hospital afterwards, and then I see them again when they come back here, and I talk to them frequently on the phone. So I think that 
in my opinion, probably adds a little bit of um, relief, maybe for the patients and the family, that there is someone they can call and talk to and ask questions and, and then hopefully have all the answers. It benefits those community physicians to send their patients here. I feel that they should have confidence in the way our nursing staff, facility, as a whole take care of the patients here from pre-op to recovery to discharge. Because they're so seasoned and veterans at this, that it's gonna be an effortless transition from the beginning to the end. Since we started in October 15th, we've done 11 cases and they're all doing very well. I see that we'll be doing a lot more cases, um, a bigger tavern clinic, I think, a bigger room, and yeah, I think it's gonna grow. I think that um, there'll be a lot more patients that are gonna be candidates for it in the future. I'm happy to be here. I'm really happy to be alive and well, and on the mend, so to speak. And probably uh, my wife asked me for another 10 years, so I think I'll give her 15.